David Davis, a resident of Greenbrier, Tennessee, fought for his life when his boat capsized in the turbine discharge area below Cheatham Dam June 26, 2010. He was rescued and revived with CPR by a nearby fishing crew that pulled his lifeless body from the Cumberland River. He unfortunately lost his fishing buddy in the accident. On November 27, 2012, Davis shared his story with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in hopes of saving others that fish in the hazardous waters below hydroelectric dams. We no sooner stopped and we were, uh, we were trying to get our stuff collected there and somebody had yelled from the other boat. Well, we thought they were talking about the striper that they'd just caught and released and uh, couldn't hear what they were saying, but all of a sudden the boat started to spin and water was coming from our left to our right across the face of the dam. And uh, I said, well, I need to get on up to the front of the boat. And I had a strong uh, battery on the trolling motor uh, and I put the thing down, put it in the water and immediately began to turn, but it had pulled me back forward uh, straight towards the dam. And I said, well, if, uh, and I knew right then there was something I was, it had sucked me up there and I was too close. Uh, but we had uh, had problems, you know, before and do it and take the trolling motor, just whip yourself on out into the current and come back down. And uh, at that time, I thought, well, we'll get pulled back around. And I knew the momentum of the boat was going clockwise with the water. So I kept it going in the clockwise direction and did get the boat turned completely back around uh, and was heading downstream. But the current was so swift at that point, it completely spun the boat around again and sucked us back of the boat straight into the dividing wall. Uh, that's when my friend went off uh, the back of the boat. And uh, when it did that, uh, it, it was just, uh, it was nothing I could do. I tried to, I jumped from the front of the boat to the back of the boat before we ever hit the wall, trying to get the motor to start. But just as I hit it, the motor hit the divider wall and there was no starting of the motor. Uh, I don't know if it bent the prop, what it did to it, uh, but I, it would not start at that point. The boat turned sideways. Uh, the length of the boat was within the divider walls and there was uh, some water coming out of the spillway. Uh, it wasn't very much, but it was enough that it pulled the boat into it and when it did, it sucked the boat straight against the side of the wall of the dam there. Uh, the first time that it, uh, it did that, I was sitting at the, the steering wheel trying to start the boat, and I, I hadn't got up, but it threw me out of the boat against the f uh, wall of the dam. And my feet came back down into the inside of the boat. And when it did that, I tried to grab a hold of the steering wheel, and I did with my hand, but it, it's doing a tilting number real fast. And it threw me back against the wall again. And I'm hitting flat against my back, against that concrete wall every time. And when I, I came back into the boat, I grabbed the steering wheel and locked my arms underneath the steering wheel, thinking I could hold on and it would be okay till somebody could come and help me. Uh, did not know that it was such as it was and as fast as all this took place, but it threw me back up against the wall. That time my feet came down between the boat and the wall and I was walking on the bottom of the Cumberland River. Uh, I, it knocked me down and I, I tried to immediately feel for my life vest uh, actuator, the lever and I could not find it. I searched everywhere. The water was so turbulent right there at that point. I, I was amazed that I was even, even any kind of control. Uh, and uh, I was sitting flat on the bottom of the river and I could see a log, 
I could uh, feel rocks and I knew I had to get away from the bottom of the spillway to keep from being sucked up underneath there. Uh, and I stood up. I, I, no one could ever told me I'd have stood up in that current. I stood up and I'm not sure whether it was just a calm place in the, in the current of the water uh, in the way it was swirling. But I stood up and I walked out about 10 or 15 feet and I started to swim up and I got all the way to the top of the water. And when I got there, I took one short breath and I was sucked back down completely to the bottom of the river. Uh, and I, it set me down. I, I, I got back up again. And in the process, I tried to walk further away. And I mean, you can feel the large stones up under your feet, bigger rocks. Uh, you can feel everything on the bottom of the river. I've even got the shoes that I wore that day. And I tried to come up a second time, and I got about halfway up to the, I could see the, the light above the water. And uh, I couldn't go any further. I couldn't hold my breath any longer. Uh, I was exhausted, and I felt water come in my nose, it come in my mouth. I feel, I could feel that. And the cooling sensation of the water came down in my chest to about right here. And that's the last I remember. He said the accident happened in an instant and the water was very powerful. So I was overwhelmed so fast and there was nothing we could do. Uh, there's no way to control anything that happens once you're caught there. The water pulled me down, it was so fast. Uh, the water below that dam is between 12 and 15 feet deep right there. Uh, I can tell you that at an instant of a, a, a second in time is gone and you have no chance. That water is so forceful there. Uh, if I would have had on two life vests, it would have sucked me down. Uh, the, there is no way that you could stay up uh, with that force of that water there. And it wasn't that much. It was, it was probably the least amount of water I had ever seen come through the dam or come in that way. Uh, most of the time the water will come and it's in a big swirl. Uh, and it will come out and it'll go 100 yards down below the, da uh, the wall, the dam, and it circles around and comes back. But that day, for some reason or another, whatever reason it was, the, the circle was smore, smaller. And it was, uh, when it swirled around and it caught us, there was no way we could do anything. The water uh, anywhere up there is so dangerous. Uh, if you're caught in it, and you don't have your big motor running, you don't have a chance. It's been more than two years since the accident, but Davis remembers being sucked into the water like it was yesterday. I should have been dead. Uh, I can remember the water cooled me so much, and I never felt like that. And as near as death as it can be, I don't care however anybody looks at it, you can, I can look at that and tell you that there's no thought. There's no, nothing in your brain there's no thinking, well, what if I'd have done this or what if I'd have done that? It, it's not there. You're, you're, you're gone. I, that was it. There, there isn't, I can't, I mean, it just, hmm, it's lights out. But I don't, I, I, I'm all for them putting a the restriction to 250 yards below the dam. I mean, I, I can understand people wanting to fish but the, the hazards outweigh the, the fun. You can uh, go and you can be experienced and you can do all you want to do, have all the fun, but you're still taking a risk every time you go there. This is Lee Roberts reporting for the Nashville District.